Hi everyone, it's Russell Lowe speaking and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create these three flat components with their uh, slots in them and with their, the tongue sticking out so that they can sort of lock together. Uh, if you're careful you can make these things lock together uh, and if it's well designed you can make them lock together without any glue uh, but uh, if uh, if it does need some glue, then these tabs and slots and everything will make uh, the construction much stronger. Uh, so first thing I'll do is uh, create a new design. And uh, I shall, uh, the second thing I'll do is actually save it. So save, let's call it uh, the, let's call it two, or say three, I think, uh, the space, the space between, and go uh, in the BNV project. I could save it in any other project, but I'll uh, I'll save it in that one, and uh, go save. Right. So in a couple of seconds, this will update. There it is, and uh, and now that's the name of this um, new design. So before we get started. I know we're going to uh, laser cut this uh, little construction out of 3mm um, poplar plywood. So uh, it'll be useful when I'm doing this to actually have all of my uh, dimensions snap to 3mm inc increments. Um, that's so that uh, when everything's uh, sort of snapping and locking together, uh, I won't have funny miniature little overlaps and things which are getting in the way. So to do that, we come down to the bottom here to the grid and snap settings and uh, we'll go into the see I've got a grid layout on I've got layout grid lock snap to grid also checked go to the grid settings um, adaptive uh, does some smart things but sometimes um, uh, it's easier if you just go fixed and then I've changed this already to three millimeters and a minor subdivision of one uh, the default was five millimeters uh, so 3mm matches my material, so that's good, go OK, and then come back to the grid settings again and come down to this incremental move, set that, also to it was defaulting to adaptive, change it to fixed and uh, the increments, 3mm and rotational increments, 5 degrees is uh, the default and we may as well leave it there because uh, we're making rectilinear things so we don't need to worry about that so much. So go OK, and now I'm ready to build. So first step, uh, create a new component. I'm going to call it uh, bottom. Now there's going to be a, a few bottoms because uh, there'll be one float in the air later, I imagine. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a bit hard to come up with a naming scheme, but try and come up with something that's sensible. Uh, I'm just basing it on the, on the view cube so that uh, uh, at least I've got that reference. Uh, activate it. Uh, I could have made it from bodies if I had drawn something already, uh, but uh, I haven't drawn anything. It's empty space, so uh, it's uh, from an empty component. Go OK, and here it is, bottom, and then the first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch. It'll ask me what plane. Click the uh, uh, bottom plane, or uh, we're looking down on it here, and now I'll click my rectangle see how it's snapping to my three um, millimeter grid that's handy click it and drag it and you can see how it's snapping to uh, three millimeter increments also handy and now I'll uh, that'll be the basic outline I'll uh, make these line up just so when I'm looking from the ends it's a bit easier to see you can put them all over the place, but once this thing gets a bit more complicated, it gets harder to see where things are. So uh, snapping to these, and once again, do it the same, so that when I'm looking down, uh, when I'm looking from one end to the other, I don't get confused with uh, which line I'm actually supposed to be drawing the tab for. Uh, so I can hit finish sketch, uh, which is not bad practice, or I can just come over to the solid, and hit extrude and uh, that finishes my sketch and go straight on to the extrude uh, so you could finish sketch and then come to solid and hit extrude it's up to you so select the profile 
Uh, it's pretty good. It's selected everything I wanted. I didn't get any of these bits that I've sort of cut out of it. Uh, the distance. So let's hold shift down and middle mouse button to rotate. I can drag this up like this and it's again snapping to uh, three millimeter increments in that third dimension. Uh, I could leave that or I could stick it up here and then come over to the distance and type three for three millimeters, new body is what we want and go okay. And then we go, there's my, uh, the first component, uh, the bottom of this whole thing. So let's go and make the side, uh, new component. And actually, I've got this one selected, so it's going to make it a child of this one. So I'll just go through that and show you. Uh, let's call this one front. Uh, also empty components. Uh, all good, activate. Yep. And then uh, you can see that this front component is actually, if I minimize uh, all of the bottom stuff, it's actually part of that. So let's just click and drag it up to... The base level so when I close the bottom one this is a separate thing uh, create I'll make sure later that I'm selecting this one so that um, uh, so that they naturally become equal to the, the each other so uh, create create sketch select that plane there this time and then uh, go rectangle I'll start from this corner here and come up here and you can see what I've done sometimes it's easy to draw in 3d sometimes it's easy to draw in 2d just made it into 3d I'll draw another rectangle here because I've got these grid things snap now I want to line it up to this it's probably easier to see it in 2d and uh, and once again I'll see how it's giving me a dotted line Make sure everything lines up. Uh, this time I'll finish the sketch and I will now go to uh, extrude uh, from uh, the solid menu. Click here. Now I need to add this one in. That's the tongue that's sticking into the bottom one. Spin it around so I can see what I'm doing. Yep, that looks good. Uh, distance. You guessed it. It's going to be three millimeters. Stick it out here, whatever. Could actually stick it back. And get it just right. So be careful when you're dragging this. It's often easier to type a number in so that it's perfectly uh, will line up. New body is good. Go OK. And there we go. That's a new one. So I'll do one last one. Uh, go back to the this um, uh, base here, or the, the sort of base component. Assemble new component. Uh, same settings here. Let's call this right and go OK and then uh, create a new sketch. Select that face. Grab my rectangle tool, click and drag to here and then I need to add that tab in there. I need to add that tab in there and, I, and I'll make this cut out here and I'll line this cut out with this one up here you can put these anywhere you like but like I say if um, I'll finish the sketch uh, it helps it helps to get every keep things lined up because it's harder to make mistakes here we go some cutouts here some tabs sticking out there new body distances three mils uh, this could be Uh, this could be in the other direction. You could do it that way by mistake. So um, just keep an eye on which way it's going and go OK. Now we click the base level and you can see. So this is going to illustrate a, a pretty important thing about uh, Fusion 360. Uh, I've I've just gone ahead and made this rectilinear and uh, and cut out its side and, and we're going to end up with a pretty boring box. My intention, uh, like the sample, was to actually have a cutout come down here like this so that it actually sort of steps in and there's something sticking out the side as well, sort of hovering in the air. So uh, I've got to go back and change this 
So uh, I can come back in the uh, in the feature history here to um, uh, to change it, or I can right click on here and I can either edit the feature or the profile sketch. Now I want to change the uh, the shape of it, so not the thickness of it. So the shape of it's defined by the sketch. The thickness of it was defined by the feature. So I want to change this profile sketch. So I'll, so I'll select profile sketch. Now I can modify these uh, I can modify this, I can drag this across to here, in fact I'll shift this one now that's off my grid. You want, you want to keep to your grid because like I say it will make things a lot easier uh, to keep things uh, lined up later. So drag those points to make them coincident with these grid points and now I need to add another uh, cutout here so that top one won't slip around let's actually I could line it up with that or I might come over one and line it up there and so I'll finish the sketch and watch what happens it automatically updates but it hasn't all updated it hasn't updated this bit because that rectangle wasn't a part of my feature definition. So right click on here, go edit the feature, and you can see there it is. Click it and it cuts that part out. Still doing three mils, I could change that if I wanted to, do something else with the sketch, but I was happy with everything else. Uh, so go OK, and it goes back through the whole process, does that, and then it builds all the stuff again. So finishes that one off, and then goes boom, 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 finishes this other one off as well. So it'll flow right the way through. So now I can keep on going. What I'll do is I'll, I'll do the same, I'll, I'll do these same steps over and over. So I'll speed this part of the video up, and uh, I might talk over the top of it, but I'll speed up the uh, I'll speed up the video so you don't see me doing the same thing over and over, uh, creating a new um, component, and then uh, a new sketch, and then uh, editing, uh, creating a feature from that sketch, and then so on and so on. And it's the same process of adding. Actually, I should uh, just quickly before I get on. I should uh, cut a slot out of there too, so it doesn't, uh, uh, so that part of it doesn't, that'll lock in nicely. So I'll do that first, and then, uh, which will follow the same process. Uh, right click on here, edit the profile sketch, chuck a rectangle in, and then uh, finish the sketch. Hasn't updated until I add it to my feature. Right click that and go. OK, and now we're back to there again. So now I'll just go through and I'll make everything sort of uh, line up and uh, add extra parts to it. And it'll be the same process from now until the end. It'll probably take me uh, maybe uh, probably 20 minutes uh, in real time and I'll speed this part of the video up so maybe it only takes about two or three minutes. OK, hang on tight.